A word of warning. The following episode contains discussions of transphobia, depression, and suicidal ideation, and may be triggering for some listeners. Discretion is advised. This podcast deals with issues about LGBT families and trans-specific topics. We would love to hear from you and welcome your questions and comments. However, we will not tolerate any discriminatory language or hate speech. So please, just don't do it. Enjoy the show! People are complicated, and there's going to be different reactions, different things that you're going to have to deal with mm-hmm. in this situation, and it's it's frustrating to have to have that worry. Well, was that the reason that it took... Would you have come out before if not for the fear or was that just the time that you were going to come out because that's the time that you came to the conclusion yes and yes i probably would have come to the conclusion much sooner if there wasn't a fear on a cultural stigma When we were kids, we met at camp. After college, we got married. Ten years later, we finally had a baby. That same year, I came out as trans. This is the story of our journey. Through marriage. Parenting. Gender. And all the changes that life brings. This is Our Our Life Life in in Transition. Transition. Is one ever ready? No. Oh, okay. Am I too, like, up in your shit here? No, that's okay. You can be up in my shit. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Hello. Hello. Thank you for joining us again for another delightful episode of Our, Our Life, Life in, in Transition. Transition. I am Shannon. And I am Rachel. And that was our printer. Making noises. Just Cut. having general fits. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, it's almost Halloween. Yeah. So, uh, we have a fun-filled Halloween weekend. We do. Uh, planned. Tomorrow's gonna be awesome. Though I still don't have a costume. I'm going as a tired mother. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. I mean, you're clearly really committed to that all year long. So. All right. I'm gonna get this shit smacked out of me in a second. No, no, not while there are listeners. (laughs) Anyway. Anyway. So, so it's Halloween. So let's talk about fear. Ooh, fear. Spiders? Mm, I was thinking more along the lines of transphobia. Tran- transphobia? Transphobia. Oh, I think you meant like transphobia, like ah, pop culture. No. Well, there's some of that too. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't understand K-pop. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrifying. People who listen to K-pop don't understand K-pop. That's probably fair. Anyway. I'm sorry if you're a K-pop listener. Yep, we love you. Please don't go away. <laughs> so. Um, How's your butt? It it hurts. Shannon fell on her butt. Yeah, I kind of ha- have had uh, a slightly rough week. Not all of the week, but the past couple of days have kind of sucked. Tuesday night, I, I, I fell on my ass. Down a flight of stairs. Down a flight of stairs. So, it, just just a word to the wise. Um, if you're going to take the dog out at like, you know, 9, 10 o'clock, when it's dark, make sure it hasn't started raining, especially if you're wearing flip-flops, and watch out for fallen leaves, because, you know, you might slip and fall. Can I just say, I don't like that a word to the wise. The wise already know this shit. It's the unwise that need the words. Fair enough. Okay. So to all the other dumbasses like me who don't think ahead, please uh, please be careful going down the stairs. So, Shannon has 
a rather large, very, very purple bruise. It's like gr- her, it's like grimace purple. On her hiney. Yeah, it's bad. Yes. Which I don't even get any McDonald's because I'm on the keto diet, so that's not even fair. I mean, I mean, it wasn't funny at the time. No. But in hindsight. Yeah. No, at the time it was, it was it was horrible, and I was sad and crying and in pain and. But I keep telling the story, and it just keeps getting funnier and funnier. And and the one thing that I, I I've equated it to uh, lately is if you've ever seen Eddie Murphy Delirious when he's talking about his aunt Bunny falling down the stairs. It was kind of like that, where I screamed and was screaming the entire way down. Oh Lord, just please help me, please. Just. Speaking of transphobia, I guess that was just homophobic. Well, he apologized for that. Earnestly apologized for that. Kevin Hart, on the other hand, is not. Well. Yeah. Dave Chappelle said it was excused too. Yeah. Well. Anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> but um. So yeah. But speaking of transphobia, yeah, I've had to deal with that this week too. Um, where I had an irate customer, um, who because she was pissed off about something, um, at work decided that because I couldn't help her because the manager was not available at the moment uh, that she would start berating me for my voice and uh, telling me I sounded like a man, which was awesome and exactly what I needed to hear. So yeah. I was already having kind of a shitty day yesterday, so. Yeah, so that bitch is on my list. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. <laughs> but, um. My list of people I don't like. Yes. I don't have, like, a hit list. No. So the Pine Barrens are very large. Anyway. That you know of. Um. But, I mean, that kind of really feeds into, um, my anxiety about dealing with people, um, in lots of different situations. Mm. Um, and, you know, one of my fears is, is just having that happen on a daily basis. Um, Which so far it hasn't, you know. For the most part, no. I've, I've, I've lucked out. Um, and it, in large part, that's because visually a lot of people don't necessarily clock me and read me as trans. Yeah, yeah. Um, but... Um, I have people call me sir on the phone quite often, which is fun. Um, I'm going to go through the drive-thru. So, but I'm not going through drive throughs that often anymore. So, I mean, that's a plus. But, you know, as far as like work goes, um, you know, one of my big concerns when I first started transitioning was, you know, whether or not I was actually even going to be able to get hired anywhere. Because at the time I was actually um, between jobs when I came out. And... Um, I was actually kind of really terrified that I wasn't ever going to be able to get a job, especially in um, the delightfully uh, trans-friendly area that we're in. I, I'm sure everybody was but very progressive did. around here. I did, eventually. Um, I think a lot of that was also, you know, you didn't necessarily apply for jobs and get rejected. You just had to um, work up the gumption it took you a long time to work up the gumption because as soon as you like applied for something like you got hired fairly quickly well here's the thing the job yes with the job that i i worked last year when i applied for a job this past spring i actually applied at a place that i had worked at before which it seems odd that they wouldn't hire me because i did a good job as far as my understanding you know back in the day but um I got a, oh, the the position's been filled email um, a while after I interviewed, and um, I have a feeling that's why I was, but I don't know for sure. But in any case, but, well, I mean, last year I I worked for, I canvassed for a Democratic candidate for Congress. So, I mean. And that, to me, was actually scarier. Yeah. Because I mean, it was it was it was it was a smart move as far as finding a job because you know, progressives. But, um, no. But I mean, like, I was actually kind of surprised that you wanted that job because I thought you would have been more afraid to walk up to people's doors. It, well, because a lot of it was walking up to people's. It, all of it was walking up to strangers' doors. Yeah, and you know what the thing is, like I, when I first interviewed, I was scared. Um, 
my manager last year was super nice, one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Um, one of the most chill, relaxed like bosses I've ever had. Um, he was a hipster, I don't know what to tell you. But, um, you know, so that put me at ease a little bit. But, I don't know, I was just really kind of like amped up because, you know, I dealt with, you know, a year plus of Trump at that point, And I was like, you know, we need to, <laughs> we need to get people in Congress because this is bullshit. Um, and I had a job and it was there. And so I said, I can do that. Um, and honestly, the weird, the weird part is like going into it. I wasn't as, I wasn't as concerned about going and knocking on people's doors as I was about the interview process to begin with, which is weird. I don't know, but well, I guess maybe cause you figured you would have like backup but you really didn't have backup in the field no i didn't i honestly didn't um a lot of it i was just kind of walking alone in strange neighborhoods and it was that that was concerning for me yeah i mean but you once you seemed comfortable i was like oh well all right yeah and the and the thing is it's like i i didn't get anybody that was clearly like clocking me and then like getting pissy because they're like oh there's a fucking trans person standing on my doorstep but, you know, I got people that were just shitty because they were, you know, shitty, crazy, you know, Trumpers. But um, they were mad at me for a whole other reason. So, mm. so but yeah, honestly, it never actually came up the no, entire I mean, time. Black trans knocking on their door. Yeah. Wow. Well, like, uh, get off um, my lawn. Get off my lawn. Although, and, and to be fair, going back to what we talked about before about race, I actually had more fear because depending on who I'm meeting, people read me differently. Some white people go, hey, you're some kind of, I don't know what, maybe Mexican. And I have a lot of black people who are like, you're white, what the fuck are you doing knocking on my door? So I was more concerned about that, oddly enough. Um, at some point I got comfortable and I think it was just the fact that nobody had a problem at work. Just, I got really comfortable. Um, and I think the fact that, you know, that was the job where I had the person actually ask me which one of us had actually carried the baby. Mm. <laughs> so I was like, nobody here knows I'm trans. Okay, cool. All right. I just assumed you all did, but they didn't. Um, but, you know, and, and now the job that I have currently, um, I think part of the reason I was more comfortable doing the job last year was, you know, if I had an issue out in the field, I could have just walked away from somebody's door. Um and just left and said, okay, you know, you're being an asshole. gotten shot. I, maybe, but, you know, until the asthma kicks in, you know, I could run. But, um... I it, could run 50 whole feet. Mm-hmm. That's right. Hide behind a brush. Mm -hmm. Um, but... I guess in my... My mind, I was going, oh, well, I could, I could walk away if I needed to. Um, whereas now, I work in a retail environment, and... I'm just stuck behind a counter. <laughs> and I can't leave... Um, and, you know, I've worried about, cause again, when I was canvassing, I was also on the other side of the state where it's not as conservative, um, as it is where we live. So I was actually more concerned about working in a static position, having to deal with people that I couldn't walk away from who were, um, potentially going to have more of a problem. Um, and for the most part I haven't um, I haven't really had any issues until yesterday um, and but there's just always this constant anxiety that something is going to go wrong somebody's gonna have a problem you know it, it's weird to suddenly have the concern that you know I, I you know leave work and I work in a you know kind of a strip mall and you know I leave late at night and sometimes, you know, there's nobody around in the parking lot and, you know, now I have this secondary, like, okay, maybe somebody's going to go innocent woman in the parking lot. I'm going to attack you. Or there's that trans person that is now alone in the dark parking lot. I'm going to attack you. Um, and it's not that anything is going to happen. It's just kind of always a, I'm walking around with an anxious kind of, you know, feeling on the back of my head. I gotcha. I mean, and 
generally speaking, you know, I I haven't really had too many instances of people in general. Um, like in like just public settings. Yeah. Not at work. Yeah. Although actually, at, when I was canvassing, I did have one little kid who was like, "Are you a boy or a girl?" I was like, "This is awkward." I'm like, I don't know how to explain this to you. I was like, I'm a girl. And the mom was like, yeah, she's a girl, see? And that, which I appreciated. But, you know, and, and I was posting about this the other day about, you know, like the Wawa that's, you know, a block from our house I, that I go to all the time. And the people there who have been working there for years just kind of getting used to me in real time because I go there like every day um, and not seeming to have any issue. And that's really how it should be. Like, you pay for your food, you walk away. Like Yeah. Um, and, and I don't know sometimes if I am, if people do have a problem or not, if people are clocking me or not. And, and it's not something I necessarily think about all the time, but then sometimes I do. Like, you know, I went um, into the grocery store the other day to get, you know, something out of the hot bar for dinner. And um, I was checking out. There was this woman getting coffee at the food court and kind of like gave me like a weird look and she might have just been giving me a weird look because she was just giving me a weird look but my brain automatically goes like oh she's clocking me and she's you know she has an issue with the fact that I'm here I don't know if that's the case but it's a frustrating thing to have to constantly fall back on and constantly think about and honestly I, I get more issue with people online that's because they're more anonymous true true I mean, people get... People online, like, don't have a fear of you knocking their head off their shoulder. They should. <laughs> wow. But they don't. But, it, uh, you know, I mean, I do... Uh, I have no fear about using the, the uh, report button, though. Not which, that anything happens. It depends. Twitter's more responsive than, than Mr. Zuckerberg's companies. But... You know, he doesn't pay people well to actually monitor that stuff, so they don't. Um, well, according to him, there's nothing to monitor. Exactly. Everything's fine. Um, nothing false ever on Facebook, except I saw on Facebook today that he dropped dead, which is not true, so mm. there must be something false on Facebook. That must have been wishful thinking for some people. Mm. Um, Thanks again for listening to the show. If you like what you hear so far, subscribe so you never miss an episode. Also, be sure to share with your friends and family so they can enjoy as well. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Oh, and then, and then there's the police. That's fun. <laughs> you can't see this and you probably couldn't hear her mouthing fuck the police, but she was. Well, I just want you to know. That's like one of your favorite songs. You you listen to that song more than I do. You really enjoy that song. I find I have some rage issues, <laughs> and it helps me work them out. Um, but what about the police? Well, um, well, like I haven't heard about the police. But... What what about the police? <laughs> um, you know, I mean, I've got depending on the officer. You know, I don't necessarily always trust them, which is unfortunate. Um for a multitude of reasons but um as a trans person or a person of color yes all of those things um and i've dealt with different cops who have been you know different um levels of um professional in their job well to be fair there's standard douchebaggery mm -hmm. and then there's transphobic and or racist douchebaggery yes so sometimes it's just standard douchebaggery. True. Although, and one one of my, one of the fun fears that I always have is like, you know, if I'm not like put together, like say like, you know, I'm dropping you and baby off in the morning, you know, drop her off at daycare, drop you off at work, um, and I'm tootling around the car all day, um, and I don't get ready in the morning, and you know, maybe I haven't really shaved well or at all and I have some concealer on and that's about it um and you know I'm going nobody clocked me nobody clocked me nobody clocked me um I can sit in the car and you know not necessarily go into like daycare or anything like that or any stores 
but you know, I'm always like, oh, <laughs> maybe a cop will pull me over, and that'll be a fun interaction. Um, which was more of a concern when I first started transitioning, and my license wasn't updated, um. and I still had um, the wrong gender marker on there, and then I still had the wrong name on there, um, and I got pulled over once with that, and that was not fun. He just kind of gave me a warning because my headlight was out, which is always why I get pulled over for the most part. It's usually the headlight. But um, you know, a couple weeks ago, I actually went to get a massage at work and was already kind of having a, you know, everybody at work is seeing me with no makeup on for the first time and, you know, seeing what, what five o'clock shadow that I have after working all day. Um, and then getting over that, then I actually got pulled over twice on on the way home because of the headlight but both of them were very nice um and both of them you know said ma'am and were very engendered properly which is nice but um i'm constantly worrying about that because i it's i don't know what's going to happen and you know just as i'm anxious getting pulled over at any point you know because i'm black i am just as concerned um because I might have somebody who's transphobic and you know that's a power dynamic that you don't want to have to deal with um and again fortunately we live in new jersey um there are stricter laws that are going to protect me here than in other places um but that's still always a concern how's the popcorn delicious <laughs> I'm eating popcorn and drinking beer because this is my normal state of being when we do these podcasts. Yes. You went with beer tonight, not wine. I did. Yeah. Well, that's because somebody told me that there wasn't wine. No, hey, I, I, I said I thought there was wine. And you said you were, and I said, no, there isn't. And you said you were going to check that situation and you didn't. Well, then I forgot because. Because it I, was five minutes later. It was. And I loaded the dishwasher and forgot to look for your wine. So. But I did it. Well, when you want a merit badge, I did it three times. Are those available? Yeah, they come in the form of a black eye. Listen. You can choose right or left. Listen, my ass is already bruised. I don't need it anymore. <laughs> um, but, you know, uh, you know, I worry about what's going to happen with the police. But uh, as a trans woman, you just kind of have to worry about violence from violence everybody. In, in, from everybody and you don't know where it's going to come from you know i mean and not just and i say as a trans woman because that's what i am but you know uh, it could be anybody whose gender expression gender identity triggers somebody to be pissed off i mean you know it was the other day like you know the news was reporting that rosario dawson and her mom are getting sued because reportedly they beat the shit out of a trans guy I don't, I don't know what the facts are in the case but i mean it's one of those things where you never know who's going to have a problem. Mm. Um, and it's scary. I mean, it's, it's genuinely scary. Um, and you know, I think we're up to 22, um, trans people who've been murdered this year. Um, and you know how many of them are people of color? Uh, I'm pretty sure 21. I think Jordan Coffer was the only one who wasn't. So, that's you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, one of, you know, one of my friends has explicitly said that they are putting off transitioning um, because they are afraid in the current... Um, political climate? Political climate. And it's... Um, well, hopefully they won't have to put it off much longer. I, I, I hope go, so. Go, Nancy, go. <laughs> Um, just counting the days. It's it just gets worse every day. He's counting the days too. Yeah. Wow. Well, um, but I don't think he can count that high though. Mm, yeah. But no. Um. Somebody's uh, counting the days for him. <laughs> yes. The the rest of America. Um, but you know it's this was an issue before the last general election. This was. This has been an issue for
forever. There have always been transphobic people. There always will be transphobic people, but um, the Cheeto in Chief has really gone out of his way to amplify um, the bigotry and give it a platform that it hasn't had previously. Um, and, you know, again, fortunately, we live in New Jersey that has some pretty good um, protections for the LGBT community. Um, but even here, like, you know, when they were updating the laws as far as changing, you know, making it easier for me to change my birth certificate, I mean, that had passed like a year beforehand when it went into effect and it was on the news. All kinds of people were like, this is bullshit. This is stupid. Why are they worrying about this? This is, this isn't an important issue. And, you know, took their time to like scream about it online and like, you know. Something that doesn't affect them in the least. Not in the least, but you know. Um, I don't understand. There's so much stuff that affects people. Mm-hmm. Like, why worry about the shit that has nothing to do with you? Because like, they're assholes. Go scream about your property taxes because you have to pay them. But you don't have to change your gender marker, so shut the hell up. You know, and, you know, I actually had a debate about, you know, taxes with with someone who um, is a friend of mine that we got into a political discussion because they're a Republican. No. I know. It's, it's very weird for me to do that. But, you know, but they're a Republican and, you know, I tried to get them to comprehend that, you know, yeah, they keep going, well, I don't agree with everything Trump says and does, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, yeah, that doesn't matter. You, you buy the, into you that, the whole you package. get the whole package and you're responsible for the whole package. And who you vote for affects other people. And when you vote for somebody who is a bigot, their bigotry affects me. And if you care about me, why would you do that? And their argument was like, well, and who you vote for affects me. I'm like, yeah, yeah but, but I don't vote for the guy who's trying to take away all your rights. No, and, and they were like, no, but like, it's my right to not pay higher taxes. I'm like, yeah, well, I, I, I wanted paying higher taxes, too. Yeah, but and my that, your and, higher taxes don't trump my right to live. Exactly. Exactly, and they just, you know, it's one of those... Then they started talking about, like, abortion rights, and, like, just... It was one of those conversations with a conservative that where they just, like, start just bringing up random shit that has nothing to do with what you're talking about in order to, like, dodge actually, you know, um, conceding any points. So it was it was frustrating, and it wound up going Was nowhere. it a male person? No, actually, it wasn't. It was a woman. Oh. Yeah, that was fun. Um, But that's a very consistent trend, I, I see, where it's just, like, let's dodge and talk about other random shit and just pull that in and then run away um, I just assume you know because a lot of men feel like they yeah no we got interrupted and then and then she uh, she's, like, All right. she's like alright I'm going now bye and mm. we never we never hit the, the, con- the conversation um I thought about it because she wanted me to look something up and I did and I was like you know what I'm gonna be the bigger person that could prove you wrong and that's you know and, and that's what a lot of this boils down to is just people like it doesn't affect you and I'm still a person so you know why would you go out of your way to be hateful and there and there's people that you know because people just are hateful about like random stupid stuff I get yelled at at work all the time for like random stupid stuff and like you don't have to yell at me it's not something that I did to you but people don't know how to like deal with their shit so they just, you know, are mean, hateful people when they don't have to be. And sometimes I look at people and I'm like, why do you expend so much energy being a mean and hateful person? Like, if you don't like something or something, just go away. Yeah, I, I genuinely don't, I genuinely don't get it because, like, I mean, just on a daily basis, like, I'm tired. Like, I don't have that kind of yeah. time or energy. <laughs> but, and I get if people, like, are, like, religious fanatics and they're like well, this is morally wrong even though the bible doesn't say anything about it but fine whatever um you know if some i, I get people who are like try to bring religion into it but the, most of people don't i don't get people who try to bring religion into it because well, like no, mind but, your business nobody is asking you to live as trans so well, i i get what i'm saying is i get that 
they think they have a reason. <laughs> but most other people don't. There's just no reason for it. It's just... Uh-huh, you're going to attack them in the bathroom. Yeah, well, no, I just got to fucking pee. Like, And here's the, here's the thing about that. All these people who are worried about being attacked in the bathroom... Have nothing to worry about. Have nothing to worry about. If there was some guy that wanted to attack you in the bathroom... They wouldn't worry about... They would just do it. Because yeah, trust pressing. me... The time, the energy, the social um, backlash that I have to deal with as a trans person. No cis guy who's living his life and just wants to sexually assault somebody is going to put in that kind of effort to do it. They're just going to go and sexually assault you. So stop worrying about me. And stop worrying about other trans women. It's, it's not going to happen. We get sexually assaulted. In bathrooms, we get harassed in bathrooms, um, especially in states where they North want Carolina looking at you. Mm -hmm, where they want to force you to go, you know, into the bathroom that matches to your your gender at birth. Oh, you know. And the thing that I find funny about that, I'm like, I'm sorry, who's checking to say? Because the gender police. Yeah. Well, I haven't seen them. Like, are they undercover? Or like, I don't. Because honestly, if that's the case, like, why are you yeah. why are you sexually assaulting people when they go into the bathroom to see if they belong there or not? Because, you know, that seems counterintuitive. Yes? Yes? Mm. <laughs> They're preemptively assaulting you. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, we have to assault you so that you can't assault us. Like, all right. Well, I hope all the, the cis women that are going to the bathroom are fine with being assaulted on the way into the bathroom so that... They aren't assaulted while they're in the bathroom. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense, right? Sure. Anyway, anybody out there that's worried about a trans person being in the bathroom with you, you've been in the bathroom with a trans person. I can guarantee it 100%. Like, yeah. forever. They just want to pee. Yeah, we just want to pee. I mean, sometimes we poop. Everybody poops. I shouldn't poop in a public bathroom, though. Yeah, well, you know. Sometimes, you, when you gotta go, you gotta go, Rachel. Yeah, even Miranda agrees with me. Listen, I don't want to talk about you and having to go. That's why I fell down the stairs a little. Anyway. Um, but, you know, there's random people that, you know, have anxiety about because I don't know them. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know who they are. But then you also got to deal with when, you know, especially when you're coming out, your family and friends and trying to figure out how they're going to react to you and how they're going to treat you. Um... And, you know, when I came out, it was a very um, considered process. I did it in a very kind of methodical way where I came out to people I considered soft targets. I'll put it that way. Um, where... I don't think you should consider people <laughs> targets at all. <laughs> well, I came out to people that I, I assumed, based on our relationship, would have less of an issue, if an issue at all. Um and you know how'd that work out well after you the first person i talked to actually came out back to me so um that worked out all right um and for the most part you know as we've discussed it's most people that i know have been supportive um i did have some people who had really nasty shitty reactions um i have i have a cousin i haven't talked to since the day that i came out to them and never really hurt but it is what it is. Um, I have... Um, I, I find that I have more people that haven't... If they have an issue, they haven't said anything to me, but have just kind of backed away and just kind of removed themselves and, like... Well, let me ask you. Mm -hmm. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer just being told off to your face and saying... You know, this is not okay with me. Or is it better for people to slink away? I mean, it's complicated. Because, you know... Stop eating my popcorn. I'm sorry. You have dinner. So you put popcorn in front of me and I just I like popcorn. Um, you know, I, I would rather not get into a argument with somebody. Um, I would rather not get into a fight with somebody. Um, I would rather not somebody be nasty to me. However, 
I also don't want to have somebody fade away and then like, oh, I see them later and I think everything's fine. But overall, if they're going to slink away, I'm probably not going to see them. Um, and that's just, you know, that is what it is. But, um, and, and I've run into that where like people that I thought were okay said everything was fine. Then, um, in various words and deeds, showed that it was not. Um, I had some family members who said everything was fine and said some fucked up shit to me. Um, I've had people who got nasty in different passive aggressive ways, but didn't say anything directly to me, but said things behind my back that I found out about. Um, and in that instance, I'd actually rather, like, if you have a problem and you're not going to go anywhere and you're going to be there with a problem, then actually talk to me about it and don't, you know, don't say something behind my back and talk about me behind my back and then act like everything's fine to my face. If you have a problem with it, either go away or tell me you have a problem so that I can then send you away. Mm. Um, I don't understand what what people expect to get out of lying to me. Um, no, I think they're just trying to avoid confrontation and they know what their feeling is wrong so they don't want to be called out on it. But they don't actually want to let go of it either. You know, I've had at least one person do that. Um, we didn't really talk for a while and then later has said to me, like, I'm sorry. I need to wrap my head around some stuff and I was an asshole about it. Um, so, I mean, I guess I appreciate that. But, um, it's, people are complicated and there's going to be different reactions, different things that you're going to have to deal with in mm -hmm. this situation. And it's, it's frustrating to have to have that worry. Well, was that the reason that it took, would you have come out before if not for the fear or was that just the time that you were going to come out because that's the time that you came to the conclusion yes and yes i probably would have come to the conclusion much sooner if there wasn't a fear on a cultural stigma i mean a decade before i came out i was like i wish this was a possibility and you know back then i didn't think that it was um it didn't seem like it was something that was in the realm of being a thing. Um, and part of it was just because it wasn't something anybody really talked about. Like, you know, unless you saw somebody on Jerry Springer and they were being made fun of. Um, mm. And that's, and who the hell that's, wants that? Yeah, and that's basically um, the extent of what you, what was. Yeah. A, and, you know, and a so. Widely known about trans culture. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you know, you have all of, you know, American culture telling you that you're a fucking weirdo. So you go, well, I need to try to not be a weirdo. Um, and then... You can still be a weirdo. I mean, I'm, I'm weird, but you know, not because of this. This is not a weird thing. This is actually a very common thing. Um, but, you know, you have, you have people... You have society telling you that you're, like, you're sick. Um, and, and disgusting. And... You get those messages for years, so you think, no, I have to, you know, not have these thoughts, not, you know, um, feel this way, and you try to put it in, like, a little mental box, and um, that's what I did for a long time, until it got overwhelming, and, you know. Mental box broke. My mental box broke, and it was like, okay, well, either I can try to face this head on, and live authentically or not live because I can't deal with this. Um, hmm. And that's part of the reason that, you know, there, the suicide rates in our community are so high. It's, it's not, people think that um, trans people kill themselves because of shame. It, people think they do it because, because they hate themselves. Sometimes I'm sure that's a part of it. A lot of it is because... They think society hates them. Society hates you. You know. For the same reasons that we're like, oh, there's, you know, a problem with bullying in, in high schools. I'm like, well, the people don't stop bullying you after high school is over necessarily. Right. And, 
if you are if you feel like you have some sort of privilege over somebody else whether you are recognizing that it's a privilege or not it's it's a lot easier to punch down um and that's what a lot of people just feel fine about doing um and, and it's just it fucking sucks mm. um well so then you come out and then you're gonna live your authentic self mm-hmm. right yeah and then you have a whole another set of worries. Well, that's true. Because, you know, then also... With HRT. Yeah. And we talked about this a little bit before. Um, you know, when we talked about my fake heart attack. Heart attack. Um, you know, I've got to worry about, you know, um, blood clots and things like that. Um, and breast in- cancer. Increased risk of heart attacks. Um, I have to worry about breast cancer. I need to go get a mammogram. Um, you have giant bruise on your ass. I do. Which... Because you bleed more. I mean, if I had fallen down 13 stairs before HRT, I would have had a giant gi- bruise in my ass. Wouldn't be quite this But it wouldn't terrible. be this bad. <laughs> no. Um, but I do bruise a lot more easily. You, you do keep asking me, like, why do you have a bruise? I'm like, I don't know. I bumped into something, probably. Um, it's because I did it. Honestly, it's probably the baby. She's violent. She is. She's... Like, oh, it's time to get dressed and put on your PJs. No, I wouldn't kick you. That's probably what it is. Um, you know, and, and then, you know, you have to deal with your mental health as well. and Or lack of mental health. Well, yeah, because that's fun. That's a fun thing to try, try to deal with um, is getting mental health care. Um, and before I came out, once I started transitioning, still, I have dysphoria. I wouldn't have transitioned if I didn't have dysphoria. Um, that's not to say that you have to feel dysphoria because some people who are trans don't really feel dysphoric. They just go, this just doesn't feel right. I need to be in a different um, gender. I'm not going to um, try to police somebody else's gender identity if they're not feeling dysphoric. But for me, and for a lot of other people, um, that was the impetus. And... Um, it's, it's a weird thing that when you finally come to terms with what's going on, sometimes it can amplify and you get more dysphoric and more depressed because then you're like, okay, I have to do something about this. And then the process of waiting and then the fear of how people are going to react, dealing with the society at large. Anxiety, depression. It feeds, it's, it's cyclical. It feeds itself. Um, and it's one of those things like, you know, I feel dysphoric, so I transition, and then in transitioning, I feel anxious about dealing with other people, you know, identifying me as trans, and that makes me more dysphoric. I will say I'm surprised at the number of mental health professionals who are not prepared or no, equipped to 100%. deal with this. Which is just insane. And I, I, I have a feeling that going forward, um, the crop of people who are coming up now, I think, are going to be much more prepared and equipped to deal with gender identity issues because it's becoming a more socially um, relevant and recognized issue, whereas um, before it was just largely ignored. Mm. Um, it is surprising in interacting with different mental health professionals how ill prepared I found several of them to be um, mm. even after they you know s- some people that I know have made active attempts to um, better educate themselves still aren't don't grasp the concept of you know like what's going to be triggering and what's going to be upsetting to somebody who's trans right. um, and You know, so, I mean, a a lot of what, okay, this, this topic, this issue, this episode may seem like a bit of a downer, (laughs) but, you know, um, it's because Shannon wrote it and she was home by herself. Yeah, that's it. I was sitting by home by myself in my PJs. Um, Wallowing. No, I wasn't wallowing today. Watching Netflix and, um. Ten- tending to my plants um but okay poison ivy <laughs> I, hey that's I will take that and I will run with it um 
but so, I mean, I, I spent a lot of time and I know a lot of other um, people, a lot of other friends of mine spent a lot of time like leaning on the community for support um, and finding other trans people to commiserate with, to talk to, to, you know, I posted last night about somebody being a shit to me at work and, you know, had a lot of people um, reach out to me to see if I was okay. Because, you know, there's a surface level like, well, this was a shitty thing that happened. But then, like, you know, people just message me privately and like, you know, are you okay? I'm, I'm checking on you. Um, and it's not just trans friends either. There's, I've got family and... We have some good friends and family other good that friends will offer, that, you know, a yeah. tarp and a shovel. <laughs> if we were to take them up on it, yes. Um right. I mean, we live in Jersey. What are we going to tell you? Um, but, um, and, and I think that's that's the key, um, ultimately, about dealing with all of this, is, I mean, you have to do the work to take care of yourself, but also um, you need to surround yourself with good people and um, lean on them when you need to. I'm but, leaning on my person. Yes, you are leaning on me. This is mm. actually kind of nice. I enjoy this. Mm. I'm sorry I just hit you in the head with my headphones. Are you, though? Yes, I am. I'm sorry. Mm. All right. Anyway. So, yeah. Go find some people um, that will um, help you and be helped. Yeah, that's it. That's, 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 that's the lesson. I don't know. I don't know. No, I think the lesson is, you know, don't let fear stop you from... Uh, being your authentic self and um, don't let fear of stuff you don't understand make you a monster. Yeah. And, um, you know, don't vote based on fear because that's what they're counting on you to do. You know, be a, be a reasonable human being when you vote. But vote. 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 But, you know, I think in all aspects of this, don't let fear mess with you. Yeah. You know. Because as, as afraid as I was before I started transitioning, as as scared as I sometimes feel, um, my life is so much better because... My life is better because she's happier. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I was a miserable cuss for a while. I'm sorry. A lot of other things are difficult, but there ain't nothing worse than dealing with a miserable spouse. Nothing. Mm-mm. Maybe dealing with a miserable child. No. No. Because miserable children eventually go to sleep. That's true. Miserable spouses are forever. <laughs> Wait, do the children end when they go to sleep? I'm so confused right now. The misery ends. Oh, the misery ends. You know, because then they Why wake up the next day sleep? and they forget that they were miserable. That's true. Like, they're fickle. Yeah. 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 Not you. <laughs> when you're miserable, you, you stick to it. I stick to everything. Once I've made up my mind about something, that's, that's the way things are. I'm very hard, hard to persuade. Mm. <laughs> Annoyingly so. Anyway, this has been another av- episode of Marriage Counseling. <laughs> <laughs> With Shannon and Rachel. No, no. Um, I think we're good. I think we're done. Yeah. Don't let fear ruin your life. No. But also, have a happy Halloween. Yes, exactly. I have to find a costume. My costume is standard tired mom issue. Mm-hmm. I threw my suit away. I could really fuck everything up right now. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody be like, April Fools? Like, like Really? Wait, wait what's happening? so confused mm. anyway I was gonna buy a, a shirt that said uh, error 404 co- <gasps> costume not found oh my god okay so literally what when you were on your way home from picking up the baby and I was doing the dishes I was playing with the, the Google home and they actually have like a, a Halloween costume quiz and one of, and one of the, my results was actually a, a 404 mm. 
I had never thought about that until like, I don't know, an hour ago. Mm. I'm glad we're on the same page. Right. Yep. Anywho. Okay. So, I guess we will, uh, we will not see you. We'll talk to you we'll again talk to soon. We'll talk to you again soon. Have a happy Halloween. Don't eat too much candy. Steal the Reese's from your kids. Unless you're allergic like I am. Then find something else to steal from them. But yeah. That's unethical. Is it though? I think it's a fair payment. You gotta take them out. Okay, that sounded really bad. Don't take out your kids. I mean, <laughs> take them out trigger treating, but don't like take them out. You're the one that said it's over when they go to sleep, so I don't know. <laughs> Alright, anyway. <laughs> this is going off the rails again. I am Rachel. And I am Shannon. And this has been our life in transition. Yes, yes it has. Yes. Okay, goodbye. We will see you again. We will talk to you again. God damn it. We will talk to you again soon. I don't know. I think you're actually going to stalk these people. Only if you're a transphobe. Sleep well. Yes, yes, exactly. Goodbye. Thank you again for listening to Our Life in Transition. This show is hosted by Rachel and Shannon McDill. Our producer and editor is Shannon McDill. Theme music is Seize the Day by Jens Kilsoft. Check him out at jens.kilsoft.net. Support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash olitpod. That's forward slash O-L-I-T-P-O-D. Your support makes this show possible. Thank you.